once again, Robert Portnoy. In the end, a tough night for UNM in fabulous Las Vegas. Utah State 91, New Mexico 83 final. Malloy Dodge, the number one selling Dodge and Ram dealer in New Mexico. Shop from hundreds of Ram trucks, the largest inventory in the region. Malloy Dodge on Coors deal. The Lobos were dealing, and Vance Jackson was dealing, and New Mexico had grabbed a second-half lead. The Lobos led by as many as eight, five minutes into the second half, but Utah State closed strong and defensively locked down on UNM. The Lobos missed their final seven field goal attempts and did not make one from the floor for the last three minutes and 24 seconds. Well, Utah State went five of six from the floor down the stretch. And in the end, the officials weighed heavily on this game. 35 of 45 from the foul line, Utah State. Well, the Lobos were just 17 out of 21. 29 whistles against UNM and just 19 against Utah State. And there was a major swing in this game as the officials, and in specifically Eric Curry, was the man on the baseline that missed the call on the loose ball that was clearly off of Kata's hands. It went out of bounds. He awarded it to the Lobos. This is midway through the second half. The resulting technical from Coach Weir, as he argued the call, those two free throws were made by Merrill. They got a bucket following an offensive rebound on the ensuing possession because it's a two-shot technical in the ball. Four-point swing, and Utah State seemed to use that momentum and it carried them to the foul line a lot down the stretch. And it wasn't just at the end when the Lobos were fouling to try to get back in it. Utah State, quite simply, had the better of the whistles tonight. And they took full advantage of it at the line. There were many factors yeah. that contributed to their win. Right. But certainly the foul disparity is something that will be talked about. Yeah, well, no question. Um, but the things you can control, like shooting and scoring the basketball, New Mexico came out in the second half on fire just shooting the ball on fire and then went cold Um, didn't find any other ways to score and then of course the fouling situation did affect their rhythm offensively Uh, and not having Carlton Bragg in the post um, was huge also I mean Jackson almost had to try to create offense for uh, himself and others without the big fella in the paint and losing Carlton Bragg It made it more difficult to foul out Keita. Keita was playing in the foul trouble. And, of course, Bragg has been so good down low of late. Remember those back-to-back jump hooks that he scored over Keita at one stretch there when the Lobos were rocking early in the second half. Right, like I said, early in the second half came out and uh, just on fire offensively. They were shooting a high field goal percentage where the Lobos and then went cold. You know what we're craving after today's game? Fresh strawberries and raspberries dipped in chocolate and New Mexican flavored candy from the Candy Lady. The Candy Lady offers the best candy in New Mexico to recover from today's game. Make sure you swing by the Candy Lady in Albuquerque's Old Town. They're home for almost four decades. Perfect when you're in the mood for the perfect treat or when you need the perfect gift for all occasions. The Lobos and the Candy Lady, New Mexico traditions for over 30 years. First time out of the Lobo basketball postgame report, Utah State eliminates UNM from the Mountain West Tournament. Aggies 91, Lobo's 83 final. Back after this. Lobo basketball from Learfield IMG College. The Lobos lose a tough one, 91 to 83 to Utah State. The final margin, the eight point margin, ends up being Utah State's biggest of the game. The seven seed Lobos fall to the two seed in regular season Mountain West Conference co-champion Utah State Aggies. Lobos season comes to a close here. 14 and 18 is the final record. It is the first losing record for New Mexico since the 2015 season. That was Coach Neal's second year at the helm. It was after the departure of that incredible group that included Kendall Williams and Cam Bearstow 
and Alex Kirk and the remaining Lobo senior the next year, the leader, Hugh Greenwood for that team, the 2014-2015 team. That team finished one game under 500. So the Lobos end the year at 14 and 18, sub 500 for the first time in four seasons. Alongside my broadcast partner, Hunter Green, I'm Rob Reporter. We come to you from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. It's the Lobo basketball post-game show. You know, every year, and this year no different, the Lobos and Evergard Roofing and Evergard Solar, they donate for slam dunks. $10 per dunk to Allface. Allface serves over 2,500 children and their families every year by teaching them how to prevent abuse and guiding them as they recover from it. Help us give children back their childhood. Learn more by visiting allface.org. Thank you once again to Evergard Roofing and Evergard Solar for being the sponsor of our slam dunk promotion throughout the 2018-2019 season. Spirited effort for UNM today. No moral victories for no. sure. Um, you had a chance to take down Utah State and let it get away late. But absolutely have to feel very good about the performance of this team over the final 60 minutes of their season, right? Yeah. The second half effort yesterday against Wyoming, fabulous. Yes. And then 40 minutes here tonight of a concerted effort that uh, was amped up and ramped up from the opening tip, and uh, they gave Utah State all it could handle. All right, I, you know, I, I, the, the, the Lobos basically ran out of time, and I'm not saying ran out of time here in this game, in this season. I mean, they are starting to get it and start coming around. And, I mean, if they had two or three more weeks, right, um, I mean, that's just how I feel. I mean, I could feel it and sense the pieces kind of coming together, uh, just not fast or not soon enough. So Lobos 91-83. to They fall to Utah State here tonight at the Thomas and Mack Center. Let's take a look at some of the team numbers. New Mexico shoots 39% from the floor, 28 of 72. They shoot 34.5% from three, 10 out of 29. New Mexico was fabulous at the foul line, 81% for the game, but 17 out of 21, just 21 attempts for UNM, and that proved huge. Yes, because Utah State had 45 free throw attempts. Utah State, 53% from the field as they close very strong from the floor, 25 of 47. 46% from three, 6 of 13. But 35 made free throws in 45 attempts. That's 77.8%. And, you know, you don't want to focus on one single stat, but 29 to 19. 29 to 19 was the foul disparity in this game. They sh- they uh, whistled the Lobos for 10 more fouls than they did Utah State. Yes. And the result was Utah State made 35 free throws. The Lobos attempted only 21 in this game. We knew that there were a lot of fouls called in the first half. It was 13 to 11 at That's halftime. Right. It was relatively even. Before the first whistle on UNM came... Uh, Excuse me. For the before the first whistle came in favor of UNM, the first foul call on Utah State in the second half. The Lobos had been whistled six times. Remember, it was That's six right. zero. The first half, yeah. At the start of the second yeah, half, start of six seven. zero. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, and we thought we're sitting here going, "When are they going to make up?" Right. That deficit. They whistled four in a row mm-hmm. for the Lobos yeah. to get it to six four, yeah. but <laughs> they never got back. Never got but back. The technical, yeah. that whole sequence, sequence yeah. was yep. was a huge because it was a four point swing uh, when Coach Weir picked up a person. Uh, excuse me, a technical foul. They gave them two shots and the ball, and then of course, uh, I think it was uh, Merrill that scored right after that. Uh, they got a baseline jumper. Baseline jumper. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was huge. No question. Yeah. Lobos fall 91 to 83 to the two seed in conference regular season co champion Utah State Aggies. Last to come, our final post game coach's comments with Lobo head coach Paul Weir. We've got our PM reliable player of the game, our State Farm Insurance assist of the game, all that still from the Thomas and Mack in Las Vegas. Lobos dropped the 91 83 decision to Utah State in the Mountain West Tournament quarterfinals. The Lobos end their year at 14. 
and 18 on the season. Back after this timeout, you're listening to Lobo Basketball from Deerfield IMG College. Back at the Thomas and Mac. We are live in Las Vegas. Global basketball post-game report continues. 91 to 83, Utah State, the two seed, takes down the seven seed, New Mexico Lobos. Let's uh, take a look at some of the team numbers in the game that we have not yet got to. Rebounding battle dominated by Utah State, 46-28. Lobos kept Utah State off the offensive glass, but as New Mexico missed shots, could not get their own misses. 12 offensive boards for Utah State, 11 for UNM. But the Aggies with 18 more overall rebounds than UNM. Points in the paint, 36-32 in favor of Utah State. Off turnovers, it was all UNM. Remember, they turned over Utah State 15 times in the first half. Utah State's season average in turnovers was 12.3 per game. Utah State wound up with 24 turnovers and somehow figured out a way to win this game. The Lobos scored 22 points off of Utah State's turnovers. The Lobos turned it over just 10 times. Utah State with 8 points off New Mexico's 10 turnovers. Second chance points. Again, it was not Utah State's offensive rebounding that was a factor in this one. The Lobos actually had more second chance points, 15 to Utah State's 12. Fast break points, 10 to 8. UNM won that battle. Utah State won the bench scoring battle, 34 to 31. The score was tied 16 times. The lead changed 19 times. The Lobos' biggest lead was eight, five minutes into the second half. Utah State's biggest lead was eight with 30 seconds left. That's how the game finished. Utah State winning by eight. To give you an idea of how tight this game was from start to finish, the biggest lead by either team was just three in the first half. And the first half, the game was tied for almost four minutes of that first half. All right, time to select our State Farm Insurance Assist of the Game. And boy, there were a lot of opportunities and possibilities in this one. The Lobos had 18 helpers, 18 assists on 28 field goals in this game. We selected this one. When great plays happen, it sounds like this. Quatch gets a screen from Mathis. Quatch working on Miller, backing him down, falling away, shooting a 12-footer, short, long rebound taken by McGee on the right wing. McGee lobs it, backdoor lob, beautiful catch and score for Manigault. McGee found him cutting to the rim. What a pass. When great plays happen, they sound like that. That's when teammates help each other out. It's the State Farm Insurance Assist of the Game, presented by State Farm. Get an agent that gets you. The Lobos got it tonight. They they understood the game plan, Hunter. They executed nearly to perfection. Um, in the end, Utah State was able to create enough contact to get to the line often enough, and that's where they won the game at the foul line. Yeah, the fouls uh, really made the difference here but when you look at the stats like you said i mean the lobos did almost everything right although they came up sh- short in terms of the overall rebounding they did they were they were tough on the offensive board they had 11 boards to uh utah state's 12 so uh when you look at it turnovers and 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 just all up and down the stat sheet you got to be pleased with it it's just the personal fouls the foul situation and the free throw attempts um differential between Utah State and New Mexico. That was a beautiful play for our State Farm Insurance assist of the game. Keith McGee, when he's good, is great. Yes. Um, And it was a scramble situation there after an offensive rebound for the Lobos, and that wasn't anything that's drawn up anywhere. He just saw Corey Manigault on the backside, and he threw that ball from almost a three-point arc with a lob, Manigault to lay it in on the backside. Yeah, that play wasn't there for them in November. They just hadn't played enough together. But here in March, they're able to make that connection. Future is bright for those two young men, don't you yeah. think? Man, yeah. I, I, you know, I think the team uh, all together. I mean, you know, there's a lot of promise coming back next year. Although you lose Mathis, one of the all-time great three-point shooters, and then Dane Kuyper, kind of like your glue guy, your yep. defensive stopper. But. Um, you know, just the, the maturity between, you know, the guard play and, of course, the post play. And then what can you say about Jackson here in March? 
Phenomenal. Yes. And uh, the potential for Carlton Bragg with another year's work under his belt, you know, come November next yes. year. Exactly. Become a little bit stronger, mm-hmm. more confident and, yep. and smarter and better finisher at the rim, especially work on that footwork like you talked yes. about. And uh, you're looking at a guy, I mean, am I overstepping thinking he could be an 18 and 10 kind of guy potentially? 18 uh, points, 10 double, rebounds? double, double. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't yeah. see any reason why not. Yeah. You know, I think... He's, you know, he, 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 he's got, he's halfway there. I mean, yes. he's just, he's not a finisher yet. And, and we all see that. Like, how come he can't finish at the rim? He's become a voracious rebounder, though, Yes, right? he has over the last six games, right? Yes. All right. Time for us to get a break on the Lobo Basketball Post Game Report. We still have to select the PM Reliable Player of the Game. Uh, Coach Weir, with all of his post game media responsibilities, will come to us uh, to finish up those here tonight. Uh, as this is our last broadcast of the year, we will wait patiently for Coach and bring him to you live from the Thomas and Mack Center. The Lobos fall to Utah State 91 to 83. We're back after this break. You're listening to Lobo Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Lobos eliminated from the Mountain West Tournament here tonight in Las Vegas, 91-83. The two-seed Utah State Aggies defeat the seven-seed New Mexico Lobos in the Mountain West quarterfinals. Alongside my broadcast partner, Hunter Green, I'm Robert Portnoy. We'll select our p and Reliable Player of the Game here in just a moment. But Hunter, it is a point of reference for a turn in momentum, certainly, in a change in the way that this game played out. The Lobos were rolling. It was the 14-49 mark of the second half. New Mexico enjoying its biggest lead of the game at 52-44. And that is when a loose ball rebound, clearly on replay, we both got to see it on the CBS monitor. It was last touched by Kata. And... The ruling was Utah State ball. Coach Weir saw it clearly from the coaching position at the coaching line on the other end of the court. And as the teams went to immediate timeout, Coach Weir said something choice, obviously, and he got teed up. No, he actually got teed up for, I mean, he was for clear. crossing the line. Yeah, no, okay. crossing line. So he for, was, it was the position on the court. Yes, okay. he was off of, he was over half court. Okay. Yeah, and that was the reason why he got the technical. Okay. But it was because he was upset about right. the missed call exactly. on the loose ball yeah. off the Kata. missed shot. Yeah. And because it was off of Kata and it was ruled to be Utah State ball, that brought Coach Weir over the coaching line. And from that point, the technical free throws were awarded at 14:49. Out of the media timeout, he made those. Then it was... Brito. Brito grabbed the offensive rebound on the ensuing possession, and Brito scored the basket that completed the four-point swing. Oh, okay. It was Brito. And that made it 52-48. And yeah, it was off of Merrill's miss. Correct. And Merrill Brito, missed. Yes. Brito, Brito rebounded. That's right. Brito scored. Merrill attempted a three-pointer and missed. And it's not that immediately Utah State, you know, got tied, but... It was tied by the 11.43 mark. It was tied at 57.57. So, you know. Definitely a momentum swing. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to those technical free throws. And it's 52.45. In a span of another three and a half minutes or so, the game was tied. There was definitely a momentum swing right there. Um, Just one key point uh, in a basketball game full of them. But part of the the free throw disparity as well yeah yeah Yeah, he gets he gets a shot at two he gets right because of that technical against the head coach you get a two shot technical there's two of them of their 45 right there so the tie at 57 came at 11 43 and then utah state got its first second half lead at 10 20 and it was again at the foul line it was Keita. Yeah, it was over 19, uh, 20. Nimish Keita. Game, game lead, uh, yeah, excuse me. Uh, in free throws. Lead changes. No, lead oh, changes you're talking, yes, in the 19 game. lead changes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. 19 yeah. lead changes and 16 ties. It was um, 
I love it. Airtight is a great phrase. Yeah. There, there was there wasn't any any space to breathe in this one. No, no, no. It was. Yeah. Uh, it went down to the wire, and you know, New Mexico, like you said, there's no moral victories, but uh, you like the play of the Lobos over the last five, four games, right? Although at Wyoming, that loss, the last game wasn't what you wanted. But I mean, I, you know, we saw some improvements. Fresno State and Air Force have begun their Mountain West quarterfinal on the Mountain West court here in Vegas. All right, it's time to select our PNM Reliable Player of the Game, and uh, there's no doubt who it was for the second straight night. The game changer for the Lobos, none other than Vance Jackson. Angle left to Jackson. Jackson working on Brito. Jackson leaning in on Brito. Shows the ball. Spins. Falls away. Scores from 10 in the paint. Vance Jackson with 25. <laughs> Vance Jackson doing it all, and you can hear the joy in your voice there, yeah. Hunter. Vance Jackson was playing with joy over the last 48 hours, yes. right, in this yes. building. You talked about that. He had a smile on his face yesterday, and you encouraged him before today's game to continue to play with that same passion and exuberance yes. and, and, and smile and fun. enjoy Have fun it. with it, yes. yeah, yeah. And he did, and uh, you could see him just, again, just blossoming, improving every game. Vance Jackson, the PNM Reliable Player of the Game. PNM delivers reliable energy to you 24-7. Committed to community partners, PNM, adding cleaner resources, including more solar and wind energy. We're going to build a strong, sustainable energy future for New Mexico. Talk to us at pnm.com, where you can manage your account and learn how to save money on your electric bill. The PNM Reliable Player of the Game, Vance Jackson. Uh, we will get through all of the individual totals in this game, the Lowell's final game of the 2018-2019 season when we return. We're live at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. The Lobo Basketball postgame show continues. We still await Coach Weir to talk to him postgame. Final score, Utah State 91, the Lobos 83. You're listening to Lobo Basketball from Learfield IMG College. <laughs> Welcome back to the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas at the Mountain West Basketball Championships for 2019 presented by Air Force Reserve. Lobos fall 91 to 83 to two seed Utah State, the seven seed New Mexico Lobos bidding to become the first seven seed ever to advance all the way to the semifinal round of the Mountain West Basketball Championships, and they come up just short. Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino is your home for winning entertainment, including simulcast racing. The Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino is the site for the overtime call-in show and the final of those for 2018-2019 is coming shortly. J.J. Buck is awaiting your phone calls from the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino. He'll take those toll-free nationwide as he uh, will broadcast locally in Albuquerque for you when we wrap up here in the Thomas and Max Center. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of New Mexico. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of the University of New Mexico and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by Learfield IMG College and approved by the University of New Mexico. The Lobos fall 91-83. We welcome in Lobo head coach Paul Ware for our post-game coach's comments. And Coach Weir, um, just a, 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 an unbelievable effort by your team tonight with the, the full court press and creating 24 turnovers. You got the game at the pace you wanted. Um, a, a, a phenomenal game to watch and be a part of here tonight. I know not the result that you wanted, but um, what were your, your opening comments for the media post game today as you reflected on this contest? Um, most, most, I mean, unfortunately, after a game like, well, not unfortunately, but um, after a game like this, it's mostly about our two seniors, um, you know, in the locker room, thanking them, obviously, for everything that they did. Um, like I told the media, like I told the guys, um, I wanted this year for those two guys to be us turning the corner as a program. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't quite happen. So the only solace I hope we can give them is they're going to look back 12 months from now, 24 months from now, 48 months from now and go, wow, like I was there when we were building that thing. I was there when that thing started. And they can take comfort in that. That's the only thing we can offer them right now um, because the pain of the current defeat for a senior is like nothing, you know, you could imagine. Well, Coach, talk about the game. I mean, uh, you know, your thoughts overall against 
Utah State. Yeah, I think, you know, I told the guys before the tournament, and I, I very rarely ever talk about the game after the next game. I thought we were really fortunate. We had two teams that we could go crank the heat on, and, and it was a very good bracket for us. Um, if we were playing Fresno or Vegas or some other teams, I don't know, but I thought those two teams we matched up really, really well with. We could speed up and get into a kind of wilder game. Um, and I thought for 30... Six and a half ish minutes, 37 minutes, we were where we wanted to be. I think, to be quite honest with you, the last three, four minutes when I would like to put the pedal all the way down to the metal, I think human nature of some of these guys and the gravity of the moment, we just kind of we, we, we eased up a little bit. And they started getting some pulse feeds and they started running offense. They started playing ball screens. Like they started getting some things in their half court offense. And the intent was for that to never happen. We were just going to keep them on edge the entire game. And I think us just kind of easing up there a little bit, just again, the gravity of the game in the moment, I think we just kind of locked up a little. Utah State made tr tremendous plays when we did that. You know, they, they got free. Uh, Kata made some really big plays and they obviously made some really good shots. You, you guys had you, you think the fish I mean not to blame it on the fish shading but there was a huge differential in terms yeah, of it was free through attempts alarming <laughs> and, and and maybe that kind of had you guys fought kind of coming back on your heels for sure and not a little the pressure. Yeah, for sure a little bit um I think there was probably four or five just 50 50 plays I thought the loose ball at right. 154 bouncing around we get that one we go score it's a tie game if not they get a foul at the other end you know unfortunately the one I got a technical on just the ball going out of bounds like just things like that we just we just couldn't get any of them to break our way and part of that hey that's what winning teams do right. and you know Utah State made enough plays on 50 50 balls and things like that to, to come out with a victory you mentioned the technical and you know there are a bunch of plays that you can look at over a 40 minute game but you guys had all the momentum you had an eight point lead which is your biggest of the game and we watched the replay twice hunter caught it before cbs sports went to break i saw it as they were coming back out of the break it was clearly off the cater yeah. it was the lobos ball and i was standing next to bob thinking bob like just reverse the call like i can right. see what you see mm -hmm. and they had reversed one earlier yeah, in the game I, I, I don't and then on top of that oh, i don't want to keep dwelling on this it's a timeout right so there's a timeout play so there is no coaching box i don't know why you would get a technical for being out of your coaching box during an actual timeout but hey uh, it, it happens it was very disappointing obviously that play that call because i thought bob saw what i saw we were standing with the same view of the play um unfortunately that those are the breaks of the game and and we just couldn't quite get it i, I did find it interesting that eric curry was the one who had the call on the baseline and didn't get it right bob didn't change it curry actually changed the call earlier in the game yeah, yeah. he switched the call that uh had been made and he was the the, the official that was farthest from the play we could go all night rob <laughs> yeah, the, the ward off call on carlton and offensive in the post and you know it was happening all night i mean it was it was very frustrating to be 6-0 not uh halfway through the second half yeah. i just it was very frustrating now look kata merrill they're utah state they're the two seed they've earned the right for a lot of those things right. so you tip your cap yeah. to to them for having the respect to get those calls but it was disappointing i'm, I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't we pointed it at uh, out at 6-0 the disparity at the start and then you got four quick ones and yeah. i thought okay maybe it's going to be okay the rest of the game but it wasn't and when a team like that is making more free throws than you're taking it's hard to beat them it is unfortunately with, with, without carlton in the game you know we're fighting we're clawing we're, we're playing possession by possession but when you take a player of his magnitude out of the game it's hard for us to overcome against the two seed i mean utah state's a very good team so we have to be clicking on all cylinders to kind of pull out a game like that well coach end of the season your thoughts about this year i mean i know it wasn't the type of yeah. year you wanted to finish with um what kind of what's your takeaway what, what's your final thing that you you, you would say I, you learned the most this year i told the guys i i think if there's anything we take from this season um i think we all need to understand everyone coaches players whoever um, we all ate a really big piece of humble pie at the end of the day. 
So um, you can do two things with that. You can complain. You can point fingers. You can get negative. Or you can just sit there and say, you know what? Like, I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow. And that's all of us. That's me all the way down saying, look, this can be an actually an amazing moment for us that we're going to look back on years from now and say we were a part of something. Or it can continue to do what it did for us this year and not quite get us to kind of where we need to be. And I'm as responsible for that as anybody. I, I am. It, it is not solely on particular people or players. I probably, um, you know, festered things early and midway through the year that I needed to grow from as well. And quite frankly, I didn't. Um, I wanted to spin this. I wanted to turn this in the second year. The reality is I, I just said it to, to, to Jeff, whether it's Huggins, whether it's Donovan, whether it's people that went in and rebuilt a program trying to play a new style. It took every one of them to the third and fourth years. I wanted it to be year two. I tried to cheat the process and quite frankly, we I couldn't do it and we couldn't do it. So now we need to accept it. We need to grow from this and we just need to have a hell of an offseason. That's all we can do. Speaking of the process and, and, and now since the season has come to a close, it's a it's an appropriate question now. Um, and, and actually, I was talking with uh, Steve Lapis about it, Coach Lapis, um, as he and I discussed the way that the, the Lobo season has unfolded this yep. year. Uh, it was about the time you were in non-conference play. You had back-to-back -back home games with North Texas and Penn where you went away from pressing full court and doing it for 40 minutes and doing it night in and night out, game in and game out. Um, you thought that that was the best move for this year's team. It ended up producing some remarkable moments. Yep. moments. A home win over Nevada, a, a home win over San Diego State, uh, the comeback win yesterday. Um, but you did go back to your press with that. At, at this juncture now, and, and again, this last defeat has just happened, but any regrets that maybe you didn't stick with the original plan and with the, the foundational core uh, of what you brought here to UNM from the first year a little bit longer in your second year? Yeah, that was asked earlier. Um, I don't necessarily have a strong one saying I regret it. I, I should have done I've been pretty honest about things that I've made Absolutely. mistakes on. So, and, and yeah, we love that. Thank I don't you necessarily that. totally feel that way. I think at the end of the day, when you look at our season um, where, where we missed on or where I missed on was our shooting. At the end of the day, um, I felt going into this season, we could shoot it even better than last year. We had six guys shoot 35% or above from three last year. And this year, we ended up with two. And I, shooting makes up for a multitude of sins, a multitude of pressing, man, zone, whatever. And part of it, I, I, I thought it could get an Anthony Mathis, a, a McQuatch Malwatch, a Vance Jackson, whoever, just kind of in a better rhythm, maybe not playing that way. That was part of it. Uh, but really, when I look back at this year, I'm just like, hey, I banked on shooting, um, which didn't come to fruition, so I need to reevaluate my recruiting, I need to reevaluate our evaluation, I need to reevaluate our training, our practicing, our shooting, obviously. Um, so that's definitely part of it. And then we as a team have to be robust enough to withstand guys not having great shooting years. You know I mean? It can't be just, hey, we have to shoot the ball well to have a good year. We have to have a good enough basketball team that if some guys have some off years, we're still going to be fine and quite frankly we weren't that strong we're not that strong top to bottom to withstand three or four guys just having off years shooting the basketball range and in not only the three but you're a strong believer at points at the rim sure i mean those are the baskets you want points at the rim and the three no, nothing in between exactly but, but those two areas you want to improve in and i thought we did improve on those particularly this yes. tournament i thought we yes. did a much better job scoring at yes. the rim and taking open shots there were some possessions unfortunately in the last four or five minutes that reared their ugly head of over dribbling and kind of shots you wouldn't like um, but that's part of the growth process with kids I hope we can look back on these moments with all these guys with Vance with Keith with McQuatch with all these guys and say okay like let's grow from this and, and you know next year they say hey we'll, we'll remember those moments and now we're better for it Coach Weir, thank you very much. Thanks, and, guys, for uh, an yeah, amazing thanks season, those, guys. Seriously, yeah, thanks for both the work you guys yeah. do. We, Everybody yeah. appreciates that you guys do a tremendous job. Thank, thank you. you, Coach. And we appreciate all the time that you've afforded us yes, over the yeah. course of the year and uh, all of your honesty as well. We appreciate it all. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Take care, guys. Lovely head coach Paul Weir, final postgame coach's comments. Let's pause briefly 10 seconds for station ID on the Lobo Radio Network.